Senator Marco Rubio, he sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and he joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I know these briefings are classified, but what can you tell us? What have you learned that the public might not know about the balloon that you can share with us? Well, there's a lot the public should know because it's not classified. And I, I thought the president should have gone before the country last week at some point and explained, look, here's what's coming our direction. Here's what it is. And here's what I've decided to do about it and why. And I think people would have understood it. And it's that lack of clarity that I think has led to a lot of the concern that people now have. So it's very simple. You know, the, every country, all the major countries have satellites, right? They're way up in outer space and they operate on an orbit. So every, you know, every time they make an orbit around the Earth, they can take images and so forth. So it's like a... It's like your ring camera that sends you those updates that right. it takes once an hour of what's going on around there. And, and likewise, you know, we all know about spy planes and things of that nature. But in between that too, right, in between where spy planes could fly and satellites operate, there's a very valuable space. And balloons allow you persistent surveillance. So they right. can loiter over an area and actually feed you back real-time video of what's going on. So the Chinese are developing that capability. Pretty rudimentary, not complicated. What we've never seen is it loiter over the continental United States and over sensitive facilities for that long a period of time. And what is clear is that agencies of the federal government knew that this balloon was headed towards the continental United States, something we had never seen it do in terms of this flight pattern, uh, days in advance. They didn't notify Congress until one of the news outlets was about to run with the story. And, and then they allowed it to basically cut yeah. a diagonal path right across the middle of the country and never explained to us it was coming or why. And I mean to us, to the American public. Right. Uh, plus, it sounds like, and, and you've heard this reporting from over the last week or so, it sounds like the last administration, it had happened during the last administration, but they didn't know about it until after the fact, because apparently, according to this story in the Washington Post or, or someplace like that, um, when the Biden administration took hold of the surveillance programs, they decided to go ahead and they, they started looking and then they retroactively figured out that this thing had crossed in the United States airspace a couple of times. Right. Do you buy that? No. And so let me tell you a couple of things about it. The first is that our systems today, NORAD, the spy agencies, they're designed to look for airplanes, missiles, not, you know, balloons. That, so, so that's number one. Number two is uh, has have the Chinese flown these things around the earth and circumnavigated the earth in the past? Yes. I mean, I've, I was aware they had a balloon program. Has it ever done what this one did? Absolutely not. It has not. Has it touched over, you know, so if I want to get from point A to point B, I got to go through some other place for some period of time, and that's just a route path. That's one thing. But this thing actually entered over Idaho and then just cut a diagonal path right, right across the middle of the country. That has never happened, period. End of story. Not now, not in the past. It didn't happen. If it has, they don't know about it, yeah. and they've never told us about it. This one was different from the other ones, way different, two different universes. Right. You know, you would think, Senator, if NORAD can track Santa, <laughs> they should be able to track something the size of three school buses. Well, unless Santa's on a balloon, right? <laughs> Look, Ooh, I, I, good. I, you know, yeah, it's a, and that may be, you know, because they want to, you know, uh, whatever. But the point is that, that the, the point is that, look, it's not just NORAD's responsibility. NORAD has command over U.S. airspace, but right. we have other capabilities that see things and can project in advance. This is where it's headed from its trajectory. Mm -hmm. They knew that they knew it was headed to the continental United States well before it entered North American so, airspace. And uh, and, you know, they didn't tell anybody about it and they didn't do anything about it. So why do you think that is? Why do you think they waited until it was over in South Carolina when they had that opportunity when it was uh, leaving Alaska and could have shot it down over the water there? Look, I think they should have shot it down before it entered over the airspace of the United States. That said, um, you know, look, I don't dismiss this notion that you shoot something down. Imagine this thing falls and, you know, kills somebody or damages property or what have you. So I don't take that piece of it lightly, okay? But I would flip it over and say, well, what if this thing had a self-destruct mechanism? Mm -hmm. What if it had the capability to bring itself down by whoever, you know, the Chinese, oper Chinese military operating it? I mean, that posed an air risk as well, right? What, what if this thing malfunctioned and fell out of the sky on someone? That, th then you would have to answer those questions. Sure. But those are the kinds of things the president could have come on camera and said, look, there's this balloon. Here's why I'm not going to shoot it down. And, and here's when we're going to take action. He could have done that. Right. He just didn't do it. And, and I think that's as big a much, as much a problem here as anything else. Well, I, I know you've got lots of questions. Let's hope you get lots of answers today. Senator, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.